This is the Canon 40 millimeter F 2.8 EF STM lens. What does all that mean? It's 40 millimeters. It's a prime lens. It only does 40 millimeters. It's F 2.8, so we have a nice large aperture and it's EF, which means it'll fit a full frame sensor on a Canon camera. And I'm sending it back, but not because it's not any good. I'm sending it back because I don't need it. I bought this lens actually to go uh, to pair with my camera that you're seeing right now, which is the Sony a6500. I'm shooting that in 4K. I can't do that on my Canon, but I bought it because it was a great price. This It was too cheap to pass up because I thought that it would be really small. It is, it's tiny. Let's open it up. Like I said, it's tiny. It's a pancake lens, which means it's flat, like a pancake. And so I bought it because budget. Uh, I could pick this up in an adapter because I was still gonna have a bunch of Canon lenses when I went over to the Sony a6500 and I wanted to use those Canon lenses because I had barely had enough money to buy the a6500, let alone buy a whole bunch of new lenses. Now you are seeing the F2, 28 millimeter Sony lens native. I've gotten that for the a6500 now, so that's what you're seeing. And I'll show you some shots with this 40 millimeter. And this lens was going to be my transitional lens, but when I got the camera, the Sony, I realized that I don't have enough of the video functions that the Sony provides you, like continuous autofocus and a couple other things when I was using Canon glass. So while I can still adapt to my old lenses, it's better that I send this back, use this money to put towards that camera and that lens. So that's the only reason it's going back because it's a great lens. Again, if you wanna be compact and travel, this lens is killer and I'll show it to you on my T2i. So this is my old Canon T2i, my first DSLR, and I've got the 40 millimeter here and you put that on and it's just, it's tiny. It almost looks kind of ridiculous. And in some cases it is because you have this tiny focus ring, which I'll get back to, but it's an STM lens. It's got, it means it has a stepping motor inside. It's built for cameras like the Canon 70D, the Canon 80D, probably the T6, uh, T6S or I, there's so many cameras now, T6S. And it's built to work with the STM focusing mechanism inside those cameras. And so, this camera's falling apart. And so while this lens is very compact, um, it also looks great. It has, again, the f2.8 aperture, so you can get in a lot of native light to hit your sensor, better for low light shooting. It's sharp, whatever that means. It means that it shows the things in focus that they actually look nice and crisp and you can see the details. Some lenses are in focus, but they tend to be soft. This one, based on what I've seen, looks great. And it's got an autofocus, manual focus switch on here, which is about as wide as the whole lens itself. And it has, again, it's well built. I, Guess this is like a plastic, sounds like plastic. Plastic, but still feels good. I'm not concerned about it. It's got the metal mount, which is always nice, not plastic, like the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8. I think it's really cheap. That's easy to break when you put it on and off. One of the reasons it's like a hundred bucks. But this ring here for focus, if you're gonna pull focus, I mean, you're gonna do manual focus on your own, this can be tough because your finger's probably gonna get in the way so again, this is meant to work with autofocus cameras and be one theory, it should be quiet. I did notice that it makes noise on my 60D when it's focusing. I didn't notice that, well, I used the other STM lens was on the 70D in my 70D review and setup video. So I suspect that it needs to have that STM motor inside or communication inside the Canon camera itself so it doesn't make noise. Unfortunately, I don't have an upgraded uh, I have the 60D, which is my primary camera that I shoot on, or used to be for this channel. Almost all the videos are done with my 60D, and that camera doesn't have STM in it, so I can't test it that way. Another good reason I probably don't need to hold on to this lens. But I do like it. It's highly compact. It says macro. It says macro. But it also says 0.98 feet. That's about a foot. So you're at least a foot away from something. So I don't, it doesn't really feel like macro. I can't really get up on my image uh, and get close enough to it 
where I feel like it's macro. So I wouldn't, even though it says macro, you can get pretty close, still not as close as you can get with a, with a better, much better macro lens. So I wouldn't buy it for that reason alone. Let's go to video mode. So click it into autofocus. That was kind of slow. There we go. That's, that's a better speed. It also makes noise when I manually focus. If the lens is out, when you leave, when you turn the camera off, the power, that's what you can't change. You can't sort of make it go back in. You can see the little lip there. If I wanted to retract that into the lens to make it smaller, I couldn't do it without the power. So that's the key. So again, who would buy this lens? Someone with a Canon camera that has an STM, 70D, T6S, 80D, wants to be ultra compact, wants that nice wide aperture. You get a prime lens at 40 millimeters on a crop sensor that's like somewhere around 60 millimeters. It's 1.6 times the focal length. This can go, because it's an EF lens, if you graduate to a full frame camera, like the Canon 6D or any of the 5D line, this can be used on those cameras, so that's nice. It would grow with you uh, or work on any crop sensor camera, so that's great. But if you want to be really compact, prime lens, which tends to be sharper than a zoom lens, is less glass in it. And again, that STM motor F2.8 and ultra compact, ultra light, and a little bit of macro. Um, you can get within a foot. This would be a good lens for you. And again, because it's so cheap, it's almost a no-brainer. If you just need a lens that's gonna get you more light, like an f2.8, you can go down to 1.8 and get the 50 millimeter. This is built a little bit better. Uh, there is the 28 millimeter version of this. I think it's 28. It's an EFS lens, so it only works on crop sensors, cameras like the 60D, 70D, stuff like that, not on the full frame. That may be a better option because at 28 millimeters, it's a better focal range for a, like a YouTuber using a camera in a typical room like this where you're maybe not too far away from the camera, then you can actually be in a smaller room and fit you know, a mid-level shot. But the 50 millimeter is gonna be really tight. You have to back up really far to use it. So this 40 millimeter is a little, it's in between that and it's not too bad for doing headshots like the talking head like you're seeing now. But 28 millimeters on a crop sensor might be a better option. Both really good lenses, and everyone that's looked at this lens really likes it. So for me, it's going back because I'm moving to Sony, even though I still have Canon lenses, still have Canon camera. You'll still see that here. Uh, you'll see both cameras, but I'm investing this into the Sony lens that I already bought, but it's an awesome lens. So check it out. Check the links in the description. Of course, that helps out the channel, no cost to you, so that's awesome. Thanks, love you guys for that. And I will see you next time. Ask your questions in the comments about this or any of the other stuff that you see on this channel, and talk to you soon.